So when you're building out web applications in general, there is a very specific problem related to deploying new versions of your code that you may run into. And this isn't specific to Next.js or Vercel. This is just in general a problem that you're going to run into when you're building out websites and how do you circumvent this problem. All right, so Vercel published this article back in, I think, June 21st about SKU protection. So what the heck is SKU protection? So in the first paragraph, they kind of describe the problem, right? So basically from your client, you start hitting your APIs and you get 404 requests after deployment or you get a 500 error because the client doesn't know that the new server deployment changed a API. Let's draw some diagrams about this. All right, so like always, let's start with the user, okay? Now the user, when they first load your application, they're going to be hitting a CDN or some type of server. I'll just say like this is your, your, this is your server. And if it's a Next.js application, they're going to download a certain version of your code base, right? With Next.js, you have your front end, your back end, it's all coupled together. It's deployed in one monolithic type of thing. So step one is download version one of UI. Again, Next.js is split up into routes. So let's pretend that you have a route called like a dashboard. Okay, so the user goes to slash dashboard. That's going to download a very specific version of your application. The user is going to show that in the browser. The browser is going to load that JavaScript. So then at some point, step two, the user will make some type of request, right? I'll say post request to update to do item. And that will probably return some data to the user. So return request body. This should make sense. This is like how all web applications work. You load the UI, the user clicks on a form, it submits some data, and then the API sends back some, some data back. Now the specific issue related to SKU, what they're talking about here is related to deployments. All right, let's just put a robot here. I'll call this your CI CD deploy process or your pipeline, whatever you want to call it. All right, so now let's talk about the deployment side of things, which really highlights this issue. So a developer, let's say they come along and they're like, you know what, I need to update this API and I need to make it instead take in one additional argument. And this is the required argument. The users have to send this over when they do that post request. Okay, so they make that change, they push it to the repo, and that kicks off a CI CD deployment process. And then at some point, that needs to deploy your changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and say like deploy changes. And technically what happened here is the user changed the API, but they didn't really version that change. So technically behind the scenes, you do have a V2 of API endpoint. So again, someone changes the API, requires some data, that gets deployed out. Now that's deployed to your server and every new user who were to happen to go to your application after that new deployment, I'm gonna go ahead and say fresh new user. So it's kind of apparent what I'm talking about here. A fresh new user is gonna get the UI with the updated code that knows the send over that post request with the additional parameter that this developer just added. But the SKU issue is that any existing user who hasn't gone and like, you know, refreshed their page manually or closed out of their browser and reloaded it, they still have the old code. Cause, because remember this stuff is just loaded in your browser in memory and potentially in your cache. So they still get V1 of the UI which is still thinking that it's talking the V1 of the API. But unfortunately, there's actually now a V2 of the UI and API. How do you fix this issue? Because now in this existing user who has no knowledge that there's a new version deployed, when they make that post request, the server's just gonna give back 500 status codes, right? The stuff's just gonna fail because the server's saying, hey, you know what? You need to provide that additional parameter, but this, this user's browser ha doesn't have that code. So a couple ways to fix this issue, and I would say that they're all pretty complicated, is the first thing is when you deploy a new API change, you could basically notify the user. And I've seen this in a couple of applications where like when a new deployment happens, maybe through a WebSocket event or some type of mechanism where they do a post request to an old version API, you show a modal and you say there's a new version of the API deployed. Would you like to refresh? and then they click the refresh button. That forces the browser to refresh the page. It downloads the new code, and then they're on version two of the UI, uh, which knows how to talk to the V2 API. That's one approach. The other approach is you version your API. So you might've seen this on the back end where you'll have like a slash API slash V1, and you'll have an API slash V2, and an API slash V3. As you can tell, this is very problematic because you have to basically keep versioning all your APIs. It's a lot of work. Um, this is probably much more useful for public interfaces and APIs that people are using. You don't want to break anything 
or existing APIs. Now, a common convention, like I just mentioned, is don't introduce breaking changes. Understand that there is a divide between the UI and the front end, and any changes to this API should never be breaking, okay? So in this example where we added a required property, you probably shouldn't have code like that. If you're making a change on an existing API that people are using, instead of saying that you have to pass in a required field in your code, you should probably have a path that defaults this required field to something so that old users who are making the request do not get 500 errors. They just get the old type of functionality. You can also keep track, like when the person does a post request, you can actually provide a version number or you can kind of inspect the payload to see what it kind of looks like. So like, for example, you could have a header or you could have some additional metadata that says like, um, we'll just do like UI version one or something. So basically you add something to the request so that the API knows how to look at the request and say, oh, well, you know what? You're still using the old version of the UI. So let's just go ahead and internally route you to the old version of the code so you don't get issues. These are different solutions that you could do to kind of make this all resilient to breaking your users. And it's very important to keep that in mind when you're ever changing API or backend code. Now, what SKU protection does, at least the Vercel solution, is they actually just keep an entire running deployment of your old version. So instead of like having to version your API manually, it seems like what they're doing is they will actually spin up a separate API. And somehow I think it kind of does all this for you under the hood. Let me know if I'm wrong. I didn't really read through this. I'm kind of just giving you a generic like how I think they're doing it. Um, it looks like they have a deployment ID. Okay, So they're probably passing in the request some type of deployment ID, which behind the scenes, I'm guessing there is some type of uh, router internally with the Next.js code that looks at the deployment ID and based on what it is, it's going to go ahead and route you to either uh, deployment A or deployment B. I'll just go ahead and put API V1 and API V2. But this is kind of the solution that you would have to manually do yourself. Um, or if you just use Vercel, they kind of take care of that for you. Honestly, I probably should have read through this article before I made this video, but it looks like they kind of have um, immutable deployment. So basically when you do a deployment and then you do another one right after that, somehow they have like infrastructure that's kind of just sitting there running. And because they're using serverless, I mean, this is super easy to just run a serverless function with a particular deployment ID. Um, so it's always gonna run the correct code, which is supposed to work with your front end. Now remember, there's a third aspect to all of this. There's a database. And although Vercel says they provide SKU protection, although you can add mechanisms to prevent this issue from happening for users, you still have a database. And if you were to make breaking changes to that database, it doesn't matter if you're on API v1 or v2. Again, you're gonna have the same issue where the moment you run a migration script and you remove a column that v1 used to know about, well, then you've already kind of broken v1, right? So you have to keep all this stuff in mind when you're deploying new versions of your code because there's so many different places where stuff has to be in sync. And if that ever gets out of sync, you're just going to get random errors and a bad user experience, right? You're going to get bugs, uh, crashing. So the reason this is actually beneficial that Vercel kind of takes care of this for you is because otherwise, if you don't have like a deployment mechanism to handle this issue, what you end up doing is you have a bunch of copied and pasted code in your code base so that you can handle the various code paths that a user might be on. And then you have to come back and remember to delete those old code paths. And I do think this is still an issue with server actions because remember, if you're using like a deployment to a VM, you're just replacing the existing API in Next.js, right? So like in Next.js, you'll have like server action v1, okay? And then later you come along, you say, you know what? I need to deploy a new version which is going to have your UI v2, your server actions v2, your API v2. And if you're deploying on a VM, all you're doing is you're basically just deleting that and deploying a new version, right? So now all your users who are on the old version, instantly they're going to get tons of errors, okay? So I don't think even using server actions is going to help mitigate this issue. You have to think of good solutions to combat this. All right, that's all I wanted to share with you today. I thought this was a really good topic to talk about. Hopefully you guys learned one or new things by watching this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Uh, like always, I have a Discord channel. You guys are welcome to join if you want to find a place to hang out and talk to other developers and ask questions. Other than that, have a good day and happy coding.